Hello everyone, I'd like to share with you how I made my new milkmaid dress. I've been wanting to make a milkmaid dress for quite a while, and when I saw that Lydia Naomi posted a free pattern, I took that as a sign for me to go for it. It's my first time making a dress with boning, but I figured it was a good practice for the Victorian corset I want to make one day. This dress has all the ruffles, pleading and gathering that I always dreamed of, but am also kind of intimidated by. So let's quickly get started and get ready to actually make this dress together. It will be a learning experience for us both. Here is what I used. My outer fabric, my lining, my boning, elastic, interface, a zipper, and finally the pattern. Like I said, the top pattern I used is from Lydia Naomi. I'll link her video tutorial where she shares the pattern in the description box. Please go check it out. I did end up making a different skirt than her design because I wanted to incorporate even more gathering in my dress. Next, it's time to start ironing. At least, that is, if you pre-wash your fabric first. This is obviously quite some work because You've got 4 meters of fabric to work with if you're like me, and it feels like it will never end. But I promise you, this will make it so much easier to work neatly, which is quite important when doing a corset top. So yeah, iron it all. After ironing all the fabric that we will be using, we're ready to cut out our pieces. I will be following the pattern for the most part. But because this fabric frays a lot, I will be adding an extra centimeter or two at the bottom of each bodice piece to give me some extra fabric to work with. Now for my gathered skirt, I folded my fabric as neatly as possible so I can cut out my strips in one go. You can see the sizes that I used on the screen right now. I mostly went for these sizes because I had 4 meters of fabric and I wanted to gather each strip together in a tier above it. Which honestly, my math could probably have been better, but oh well. Using my bodice lining with interfacing, my lining sleeve and my lining um, bust without interfacing. Then I've got my fashion fabric, I to recut the center Piece, center front piece because I forgot um, I wanted to add boning there so I couldn't cut it on fold. So I added seam allowance in the middle and uh, as I showed didn't cut it on the fold. So that's new cut and then I've cut the ties for the bust piece and the bias tape for around the armholes. So yeah, we finally got everything ready to start sewing or actually to start searching because this fabric, God, it frays, it really does. So like I said, we're going to be spending the next bit of time searching our pieces and it's all going to be worth it. It just takes a bit of time and patience. So, you know, just search away. Our final bit of prep is ironing our bus straps. We're ironing the straps like bias tape. So, folding both the raw edges into the middle and ironing and then folding it again, hiding all the raw edges inside of the bias tape. Finally, just wind up your bobbin thread and we're ready to start sewing on the bodice. We're first quickly sewing down our bust straps that we just ironed. Next, starting from the middle, we're going to be attaching our bodice pieces right sides together. After I did the center piece, I'm attaching the sides and continue working my way outwards. When you're done your seam, you can press them open, yes, more ironing, and then stitch them down on the right sides for a clean finish.
Make sure to pull your fabric tight when you do this, to keep everything nice and clean. Next, I'm putting together the back pieces of my dress the same way and then attaching those to the front, only leaving the center back open for my zipper. Here you can see my bodice pieces of both the lining and the outer fabric put together. They should be the same size if you work neatly. I finished the seams on the lining a bit different. Instead of opening them up, push both layers of the fabric to one side and sew it down to create a channel for your boning to go into. Now you can cut your boning for each of your channels, making sure to leave enough space for your seam allowance at the top and the bottom. Then I sand down the edges to make them nice and round. This is not necessary, but it is more comfortable and it will make the chance of your boning poking through your fabric a lot smaller. And finally, you can slide your boning into place. We can now work on our bust piece. Place them right sides together and sew up about halfway to the middle seam. Then press open your seam. Next we're going to be sewing gathering thread at the bottom of the bust cups. To do this we're going to be setting our stitch length to the longest possible setting on our machine and sewing two lines of stitches in our seam allowance. I don't start or end these stitches with backtracking because we're going to be using them to gather our fabric. I like to sew my first stitch line further away from the edge of the piece and then my second stitch line in between my first stitch line and the edge of my fabric. This will make sure I keep everything in the seam allowance. We can now gather our fabric so that it fits into our bust cups. When you've gathered your fabric the right amount, you can now pin it in place right sides together with your bodice making sure to keep most of your gatherings at the center of the bust cups. This will be the most flattering. You will also need to make a small snip into your bust piece at the center seam, so you can pin it in place properly. This center point will also be the point where you will pivot while sewing the seam. And then you're ready to carefully sew it down. It's finally starting to look like a top. Now just repeat this process for our lining fabric. Now we can place our two bodices right sides together and place our bust ties in between the two layers. I also folded over and ironed the edges of both my layers of fabric. Next, I'm pinning the top of the two pieces together. We will be sewing these down, only skipping the armholes. This will also keep our bust ties in place. As you can see, I'm going very slowly to make sure I get my seams exactly where I want them to be. And finally we're going to understitch the seam we just made on the lining side. After the understitching we're going to be attaching our elastic to our bust ties on the inside. We 
we are now ready to create the channel for our elastic to go through. Using the top of our bust die placement as a guide, I'm sewing down a stitch line at the top of my cup. Then I pull my elastic to lay flat against the seam I just stitched. We can now sew on the other side of our elastic, pressing my zipper foot to the edge of the elastic while sewing, without actually hitting the elastic itself, and thus creating a channel for our elastic to go through. Be very careful and go slowly, because if you hit your elastic on accident, you're gonna have to start over. You can now pull your elastic to gather your bust cup as much as you want. It might be handy to try on your dress for this part. After you've got your elastic on the length you want it, you can stitch it down. Repeat on the other side and you're now ready to search your armholes in preparation for the sleeves. We're now finished with the basic corset top. So let's move on to the sleeves. Start with putting your fabric and lining right sides together and sewing down the bottom seam. Next understitch on your lining sides and we're now ready to create a channel for our elastic to go through on the sleeves. We are sewing a straight line about an inch from the bottom of the sleeves. Then sewing another line above that leaving enough space for our elastic to go through. Finally, I can use a bobby pin to actually loop my elastic through the channel I just made. And as you can see, we've created a bottom ruffle. Next, we're gonna pin in place our sleeve facing on the sleeve cap and sew it in place. Once again, understitch your seam allowance on your lining side. Next, we're going to be closing up our sleeves and sewing down the bottom seam and of course pressing it open. We can now attach our sleeves to the bodice. I start with lining up my side seam and my bottom sleeve seam and pin from there. I also unpicked the bits of bias tape that overlapped with my armhole seams so I could use the bias tape to cover up my seams on the inside. After I've done that I can sew my sleeves into place. Next I'm going to pin down my bias tape in my sleeve cup to create a channel for my elastic to go through the same way as I did before. I'm trying to have my channel start about the same height as my bust channel for the elastic ends. Afterwards, once again looping my elastic through with a bobby pin and pinning it in place. Now let's try it on to figure out how tight we want the elastic in the shoulder seam to be. And this is what my bodice is looking right now. Looks pretty good to me. So we can sew our elastic in place. And that's our actual bodice pretty much done. So. Let's move on to our skirt. I searched all the edges of my tears except for my bottom hem, which I actually cut on the self edge to save myself some time. Next we're going to be sewing two lines of gathering stitches at the top of each piece.
For the bottom piece, I'm ironing over the selvage and, since I didn't really take a hem in consideration when I was doing the mat for these pieces, I'm only folding it over once and then sewing it down. Now, before we start the actual gathering, I'm going to divide each of my pieces into four and mark each part. This way, I can evenly spread out my ruffles along the fabric later on. So I'm just basically folding my fabric in two, marking the fold at the top of the bottom, and then folding the fabric in two once again, and once again marking the fold at the top and the bottom. Now we can do the actual gathering. Starting with the second tier, I gather the fabric till it's the same length as the tier above it. Then I put my two layers right sides together and using the markings I made, divide the gatherings evenly across the smallest tier. Pin it all in place. You can now carefully sew it together. Now we just gotta repeat this process for the other two tiers. Now, since I had 4 meters of fabric, I decided it would be easy to go with tiers of 1, 2, 3 and 4 meters. As you can see, that means that there's more gathering in the second tier than for example in the third and the fourth. I personally don't mind, I still like how it looks. But if you want to prevent that, you could also go with 1, 2, 4 and 8 meters. You just need a bit more fabric. But yeah, that's our skirt basically all put together. Pretty simple if I say so myself. We can now move on to the final part and that's putting the skirt and the bodice together. Now, since I had a lined bodice but an unlined skirt, I decided to sandwich my skirt in between my two layers of bodice and hand base it in place for now so I can place my zipper first. I'm going to be sandwiching my zipper in between my lining and outer fabric pieces in the bodice, but I first need to close up my skirt. So I measure out my zipper length on my dress and close up the bottom of my skirt. Then I pin my zipper in place very carefully and sew it in by hand because I suck at sewing in zippers, especially by machine. Now we're almost done, the only thing that we still have to do is actually sew our waist seam and not just baste it. So using my machine and being very carefully, I stitch down my waist seam. I 
I can now take out my basting stitch and my milkmaid dress is finally done. I'm so happy with how this turned out and honestly it wasn't even half as hard as I expected it to be. It just took a bit of time and concentration and a bit of precise working to make sure all my pieces matched up. If you made it this far then thank you so much for watching. I'm personally really happy with how this dress turned out but I'd love to, but I'd love to hear your opinion. And obviously if you have any questions or maybe suggestions I always love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye!